Even as Sri Lanka increased its engagement with China once again, a row of substandard organic fertilizer from China has strained ties between Beijing and Colombo. India has stepped in to help, resulting in a game of one-upmanship in the island nation. So, what's happening with our southern neighbor? Well, Sri Lanka's economy is not doing too great. The COVID-19 pandemic has effectively shut the tourism industry in the country, even as it is recovering from the deadly 2019 Easter Day terrorist bombing. The government has to repay $4.6 billion and the private sector $2.5 billion. But the foreign exchange reserves are now down to $1.5 billion. International rating agencies have already downgraded the country and have raised concerns over its ability to service its debt of $26 billion. Sri Lanka is now staring at a situation where it can't pay for its imports and they import almost everything from automobiles, cosmetics, fertilizer and even milk powder. Shops are empty and inflation runs high. Food prices rose by a record 22.1% in December. So, the Lankan government's move to go organic and ban all chemical fertilizers in one swell swoop can be seen in this light. This has sent a shockwave through the agricultural sector and Beijing stepped in to help. China sent a shipment of organic fertilizer, but Colombo said that the shipment contained harmful bacteria when it arrived and refused to pay for the consignment. Meanwhile, India provided a $900 million aid package and a $1.5 billion credit line to Sri Lanka, which will provide some relief at least for now. Deep-pocketed China hasn't yet helped, but it might come to the rescue in the coming months. But there are no assurances yet. Sri Lanka has stepped up engagements with both India and China for the most of the last decade and have often played the two nations against one another. India and China have signed a number of infrastructure deals with Sri Lanka individually, but the projects have seen several controversies and implementation delays. Now, both India and China have stepped up their engagement with the country. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar has just held a virtual meeting with Sri Lankan Finance Minister Basil Rajpaksa. Basil visited India in early December and met Prime Minister Narendra Modi. From the Indian side too, there have been frequent interactions signalling ties have been warming. Foreign Secretary Harsh Singla was in Colombo in October, followed soon after by General Mukun Narwane. China has also been increasing its focus on Sri Lanka. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi made quick trips to the Maldives and Sri Lanka in December and he recently visited Colombo to mark the 65th anniversary of diplomatic ties. Sri Lankan Central Bank's ex-deputy governor W.A. Vijayvardhana has said that Sri Lanka's economy will be in deep trouble unless the nation gets an inflow of dollar seven to eight billion. He admitted that neither India nor China can bail out Sri Lanka indefinitely. Thus, the problem gets compounded day by day. So what is the solution for Sri Lanka's economic woes? There is only one thing to do. Go to the IMF and take a massive loan. But the government doesn't want to do this as IMF loans do come with conditions. India can't match China when it loosens its purse strings. So what can India do? In the long term, India must use its physical proximity with Sri Lanka and allow freer trade, even though Indian businesses wouldn't like it. A strong economic relationship with Sri Lanka can keep the country firmly in India's sphere of influence. It can even help stop China from gaining control of a strategic partner in the immediate neighborhood.